This meeting will come to order. I'd like to welcome everybody to the 215th annual town meeting in Morristown. I'd remind, yeah, that's uh, 215th uh, birthday celebration. So uh, I just would like to remind everybody that this is the essence of democracy. We are lucky to be able to take decisions into our own hands, to have civil debates among ourselves and make decisions about the direction of our town. And I wanna emphasize the civil part. Um, I uh, will be the moderator and will try to negotiate uh, the discussions today, uh, but I rely heavily and we rely heavily on everybody here uh, being civil and having a robust discussion about the future of this community. I'd remind people, if you are a Vermont, Morristown resident that is not registered to vote, you should see a poll worker to my right to register. Seated to my left on the dais are select board members Bob Beeman, Judy Bickford, Eric Dodge, and Brian Kellogg. Seated to my right, is uh, our, our, our uh, the town clerk, Sarah Haskins, and behind me is People's Academy student, Lizzie Craig. I'd like to introduce Lizzie. I've known her for many years as she is in uh, the class with uh, one of my kids. Lizzie was born at Copley Hospital and has lived in Morristown her whole life. She's currently a senior at People's Academy and is planning to attend college next fall and study biology. She is co-president of the National Honor Society and a member of the Student Council. She was a captain of the PA girls soccer team and will run track this spring. Lizzie was awarded the Presidential Volunteer Award for her active service-based involvement in our community and beyond, as service is something that she really enjoys and values. We are lucky to have Lizzie here who will now lead us in the flag salute and with the chorus, the national anthem. Lizzie. Please rise for the flag salute presented by members of Boy Scout Troop number 876 of Morseville. Please remain standing for the national anthem to be sung by the People's Academy middle school fourth through sixth grade great musical theater students. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If there are no objections, local legislative representatives Avram Pat, 
David Iacovoni and State Senator Rich Westman are present and want to speak briefly, briefly, about legislative issues. Uh, are there any objections? Avram, Rich, David, you want to come up? Good morning, uh, everybody, and uh, I'm Avram Pat, one of uh, the two representatives in the House of Representatives for our district. And I will be brief. Uh, it's been uh, a very busy session so far now that we're, we're taking a, a one-week break during a uh, town meeting. Um, and the, uh, as you may know, uh, just in the, in the last week or two, the House uh, voted out uh, some significant bills, the, the last of which uh, was one that work started on um, last year uh, that makes uh, some significant changes to um, Act 250. Uh, the, uh, the bill, uh, Act 250, this is the 50th anniversary of uh, the passing of Act 250 originally um, under uh, Governor Davis. Um, there was a lot of uh, work done by three committees in the House. A lot of changes were made to the bill uh, before it got to the House floor, and further amendments were debated on the House floor, some of which uh, passed and the bill was further amended, some of which uh, did not get a, a majority vote. Um, one of the issues that was uh, controversial and was not in the bill as it ended up passing uh, was a proposal to eliminate the nine regional commissions uh, that have been in existence since Act, uh, Act 250 started and replace it um, with one statewide uh, sort of professional board. Uh, I heard from a lot of people in our communities who, who objected to that. I had uh, problems with that and I'm, I'm, I was glad to see that that was not uh, in the proposal as it came to the floor. Um, so it's, it's passed the House, it's, uh, it's in the Senate now. I'm sure the Senate will, will do some work on it um, as well. Uh, it's a, it's a, in a number of ways, the, uh, the intent is to make it um, a little bit easier and a little bit more streamlined uh, in certain circumstances like uh, lifting or easing uh, requirements for Act 250 um, uh, approval in uh, downtowns and village centers and, and, and things like that. I serve on the Energy and Technology Committee. Um, the, um, uh, our big work so far this year was in working on uh, the uh, Global Warming Solutions Act, which did, did pass by a, a very large majority in the House and is now in the Senate. Um, I have written about that in my um, written reports, the latest one, I have paper copies on, on the table. Uh, there are some uh, misconceptions about what is in the bill and what the bill does and what it does not do. Um, and I, without getting into a long discussion about that here, I would be happy to share with anyone who's interested a couple of uh, sort of frequently asked do uh, question documents that kind of explain what the bill is. Um, and, and with that, I think I will turn it over to Representative Dave Iacovoni. Hi, I'm Dave Iacovoni. Um, there's so many different issues that face us, uh, whether it's marijuana issues, minimum wage, climate change, paid family leave, they seem to act 250 reform, et cetera. The list can go on and on. And they're all very complicated, and there's not really sufficient time to do any kind of a deep dive this morning, other than to say, uh, please reach out whenever you want to if there's a cause or an issue that's of concern to you, because that's really important to us. Briefly, um, I'll share with you a project that I'm working on. Um, uh, it's, it's kind of, for many, it's under the radar. I'm working with several legislators to um, uh, develop nearly a $2 million initiative to help make sure we have enough nurses 
and physicians going into the future. We have an acute shortage. At any given time, there's roughly 3,900 vacant nursing positions in Vermont. Our hospitals, our home health agencies, and our nursing homes last year alone spent over $70 million on traveling nurses because they aren't here in Vermont. We're trying to develop a scholarship program whereby we'll provide significant uh, relief to nurses and physicians for their college education if they agree to stay here for a period of time. So there's, there's uh, many different issues. I could go into uh, the need that our state colleges have, um, that our roads and we need help with, and, and so many more. I sit on the Appropriations Committee and it affords me uh, a wonderful seat at the table to try to impact these issues in one way or another. So thank you for letting me serve you. Um, so I'm Rich Westman and I'm the senator from the county. Um, so my, in the Senate, we're on two committees instead of one. I'm on health and welfare in my morning committee. I'm on um, appropriations in my afternoon committee. And first I'll give you the downer and then I'll talk about the more positive stuff. The um, um, budget, every year everybody says the budget's tight and we're short of money and all of this stuff. But underneath um, what's driving all of our forces and drying up all of the money for us is our retirement funds have been underfunded dramatically in this state. We have about four and a half billion dollars under um, management um, in the corpus um, for retirement funds. And we're something a little over $2.2 billion underfunded. And in a very small state like that, that's squeezing the life out of what we can do for Vermonters and what programs we can offer for Vermonters, um, given that um, source. We're 54% funded for teachers' retirement and 70% funded for state employees. And we've seen um, our contribution go from a little over 4% five years ago to 12% of everything we spend on retirement, and that's continuing to, to increase. And that's really constricting any of our abilities to do things that we need to do, particularly with an aging population and the pieces around that. So I just say that because that every day weighs on every decision that the Appropriations Committee and the House and the Senate um, uh, will work on and is the cloud over all of us right now. Um, so how we deal with that will be um, um, a huge issue coming up for um, probably the next at least um, 20 years, but particularly in the next five years, it's gonna be really hard. Um, the um, second one, which um, I'm very um, happy to talk about, is the rail trail. And for all of you, I think we all, um, the governor put the rail trail in, $11 million to finish the rail twerk trail. Um, he used capital money to put that in. I think there's a little angst in the house about using bonded money um, to go out four years to do the trail. Um, but there's a lot of support for the trail in the Senate, um, the institutions committee in the Senate which is chaired by one of the senators from Caledonia County, fully in support. I'm very hopeful that at the end of this year, um, we'll have the money set aside to complete the rail trail over the next four years. Have to tell you, um, in this county, I think we're pretty lucky from Jeff to, um, to Morseville. Um, you can't go out on that trail a day and it doesn't make me proud that um, I uh, was there when we first rail banked it to make it a trail, and I chaired the transportation committee then, and um, have long supported it, and am tickled that um, um, in the next four to five years we can uh, we're going to see that trail done. Um, hey. <laughs> so I think we're open for questions now. Julia. 
Julia Campagna, Morristown. Um, could you speak to the vote to increase the minimum wage to 15 an hour that was voted in this week? And how do small businesses absorb that hike? Is it going to be a graduated over, say, five years, or are we jumping up in a huge leap? I understand the reasoning behind it, but for small businesses, it's it's significant. And if you could speak to that, that would be great. Uh, hi. It is graduated, and it's not to $15 an hour. Over two years, it moves to $12.55. So it's currently is it $10.79. I may have that number wrong. $10.79 to $11.55. $11.75, excuse me. Then it goes to $12.55. Fifty-five, and then, as it is now, it's tied to an inflation factor. Uh, it will be a challenge for many businesses. Our joint fiscal office, which is are the folks, uh, nonpartisan, who advise us on all of the economic issues, has suggested that, in in a sense, over all of us, um, some employers will adjust their prices. The cost of a loaf of bread might go up a little bit, or a coffee, or a beer, or whatever it is you're you're buying. Um, but the logic and the thinking is that for the nearly 40,000 beneficiaries of the minimum wage increase, they will spend that money back in our communities and it will help, it will help everybody. Some 26,000 children live in the households of those making minimum wage. So this is, while it's attention, it's very hard uh, for some businesses. And for others, they're way beyond. Um, the, the dollars that we're talking about. But on the whole, I voted for it. Um, voted for it last year. I, vo I voted for it every, we vote on things multiple times. Um, I, I voted for it because I think it will, on the whole, help Vermont. Uh, let me just say that um, I hadn't voted for the minimum wage increases um, all the way through. Um, and I'll give you a little backdrop of where I sit. The, the Senate has um, 23 um, Democrats and, um, um, and, or 24, and, um, and six Republicans. And um, I had voted no to the minimum wage increase that was $15. Um, when they came back with $12.55, um, um, and I'm gonna give you the politics of it from my point of view, the president pro tem of the Senate, it, um, Tim Ash, is a progressive. Tim is not going out running for lieutenant governor without um, a minimum wage increase. It's been his star piece out in front of everybody. And at 12.55, I know it's a stretch for businesses, but I think um, um, they've got a lot better chance to read 12.55 than 15. And um, particularly for me in the budget of the state, um, we have um, all of the stuff in Dale for Choices for Care, um, our Meals on Wheels programs, um, our adult days, um, a lot of the nursing home um, workers that are around here, they all pay, um, a, a significant number of them pay just over minimum wage. And so we have a responsibility to put money in the state budget. And I think we can, with all the pressures and all the retirement pressures and everything, we can get increases to help get those organizations like Home Health up um, and make that work. There's no way I could have ever got to 15. And so I chose at the end to, um, to vote for 1255. Um, it moves stuff along. Um, I know it's going to be hard for people. Um, I think it's going to be hard within the state budget itself. But um, I think if um, this hadn't passed, the progressives in um, the um, side of the Democratic Party um, would have put, brought back the $15 wage and pushed it. And I don't think um, I don't think our can economy could have handled that, but I think 1255 um, moves things along. And um, Dave says 40, it's, um, the numbers I've seen, it's 44,000 people. This affects positively. Amy? 
Boy, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing when you know who I am before I get to the mic, but. <laughs> uh, Amy Town, Morrisville. Uh, full disclosure, I'm the vice president of the Vermont State Employees Association, which is a union that represents um, state employees. There's about 6,100 of us and 24,000, including retirees. Pension. Really? The pension is in a position where it is because it was chronically underfunded under the Dean and, and Douglas administration. It is shameful that we are going to peg Vermonters against Vermonters saying <clears throat> that we need to do something about the pension. The average state employee pension is $18,000 a year. Who here makes $18,000 a year? Retirees. Try living off of that. Shameful. Unbelievable. Ed. My name's Ed Wilson. I'm from Morrisville. Since you've already ad uh, addressed um, or given your opinions on the minimum wage, which I appreciate hearing them, I'm just going to comment on it. You go any place in this area right now, any place, and there are help wanted signs in every single establishment. I talk to employers all the time as part of my business. They cannot find people. They're scrambling to find people. They're, are, they are doing every single thing they can to keep them, including any benefit that they can afford. And that's the important part, that they can afford. What I have heard from those employers is what this does is it gives money to entry level people that should be going to seasoned employees. We're teaching people how to work. Employers are teaching people how to work. Just to show up, we aren't just teaching them the job, but we're teaching people what it means to have a job. If, if you don't believe me uh, that people aren't familiar with some of this stuff, when's the last time you heard of uh, perfect attendance uh, in school, it's no longer, I don't see any big deals being made for perfect attendance. And just showing up is a big deal. So paid family leave, which did not pass, and the minimum wage, which did, I believe were completely unnecessary. Just for example, I have a grandson who's a part-time dishwasher who's making between 16 and $18 an hour. Uh, for part-time work, simply because they need it. Mm -hmm. The Global Warming Solutions Act, uh, my problem with that is anything that you're going to do to disrupt the economy. But here's, here's my main gripe with it, is this will go to a panel, the panel will help make rules, then it will go to ANR, Agency of Natural Resources, and they will finish making the rules and they will enforce them. ANR is not accountable to anyone. They are unelected bureaucrats. So you would think that the legislature who represent, that represents us would want to have a hand in this. But after the GWSA was passed, a vote, uh, a bill was introduced so that the rules that ANR promulgated would have to come back to the legislature and they would have to vote on these rules. You guys, Abram and David, voted against it. How can we hold them re responsible when they won't even take the responsibility for doing something like that? I also urge you to subscribe to uh, Tom Evslin's, it's called Fractals of Change, where he is presenting the idea that Vermont is already carbon neutral with the trees that we're doing and sequestering the carbon dioxide and a program to print more trees would do even more. I'm not going to go into the roads because I've been up here a long time, but why are they horrible? Yeah. They are horrible, 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 yeah. every place. It's not the idea that they're horrible right now. The problem is they've been horrible for years and years and years. And last but not least, last year I stood up and spoke because I was very upset with the abortion bill. 
and I said, you guys are supporting a bill that will allow abortion up to the moment of birth. I wasn't trying to question all abortion, but up to the moment of birth. And I was told that that was not correct. You guys told me that that was not correct. Within a few weeks, the Vermont legislature celebrated the most liberal abortion bill in the United States. Again, I'm not talking about abortion in its entirety, but who, who can allow a fully viable child, a fully viable human being, to be aborted moments before birth? You told me that I was wrong publicly. Now, I want to know if you were misinformed, or were you ashamed, or were you just spinning it? Thank you. And then we're going to have one more. Uh, you guys can respond, and one more person, then we're going to move on to town meeting. Um, Ed, you raised a lot of issues, and I'll try to touch the ones I remember. Uh, we are a citizen legislature. We delegate issues. If we were to take on the complexities and technicalities of, of issues like climate change, et cetera, you wouldn't have a citizen legislature, or you might, but we'd be in session 12 months out of the year. We delegate these things. We re relegate them to others and do the regulation. Should a panel come up with recommendations that requires money, it'll come back to the legislature for approval. Should a panel say we need certain taxes to try to adjust and, and mitigate the real challenges of climate change, it'll come back to the legislature. So I, in my mind, there, there is the oversight there. But a dedicated panel of people far more knowledgeable than I am need to develop a plan we do not have a plan uh, for something as important as this. At a minimum, I want a plan developed by people more knowledgeable than me, and we'll have a chance to review that. And in closing, I'll just try to touch on the uh, abortion issue. I don't want to say anybody's fibbing. Everybody has their own opinions. But there is a lot, trust me, of misinformation on this. So, OK. Al? Oh. I'd just like to say about the roads and the um, transportation piece. Um, as somebody who um, stood in front of the um, uh, House of Representatives when I chaired the Transportation Committee and um, moved re um, a revenue package after being defeated twice and on the third time um, doing that, and that money allowed us to draw down money um, when um, the Obama administration um, um, during the Great Recession, put a chunk of money into transportation, allowed us to draw down um, disproportionately our, a larger share. And then um, during Irene, matched, because all the money that we got from the feds went, matched, um, we were able to pick up a bunch of bridges that um, we normally wouldn't have been able to. I've been out there in the forefront trying to advocate for money for transportation. and. You can't do anything to the roads without money. And part of our problem in all of this now is um, our fleet of cars is more efficient than it has ever been. So the more um, miles you travel on the roads and, um, and the less gas tax we got, the less chance we've got to match federal money and, and do projects. And the more electric cars that pay nothing, um, the less money we have to do projects that will affect the roads. Um, and, you know, I drove 15 here. I know how bad it is. Uh, and from my standpoint, it's like um, the legislature needs to get off in a place with the governor's office, and we need to figure out a way to raise revenue, no matter how unpopular that alone is. Uh, if I go to Eden this afternoon, 
um, for town meeting, there'll be three guys that stand in the back that tell me they'll never vote for me again because I voted for gas tax um, seven years ago. And, but I'm going to tell you, you can't have your roads fixed without revenue. And we're in a downward spiral because the more electric vehicles we get with no revenue coming off from that, and the more efficient our cars get, um, you, um, the less money we're taking in to be able to positively affect your roads. So we're going to have two more people speak, Alan and then Monty, and then uh, we'll let the um, representatives and senators get along. Uh, go. <laughs> Alan. Uh, Alan Church from Morrisville Town. Um, and I'll try and be quick. I just want to back up Amy and give you guys kind of a compliment at the same time. Um, promises made and promises broken it looks really bad for any government, but especially a government that in the past has been responsible. So I just want to make clear, and I've said this before, town meeting before, that in the past, Vermont has not funded teacher retirement or, as far as I know, state employee retirement, you know, as much as any of our neighboring states. They've been responsible. They said, look, we can afford to do a 50-50, but we can't do a 75-25 you know, split like Connecticut does. We don't make that kind of money here. <clears throat> so, you know, my question is always, what happened to that money? Did it? It, 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 I mean, I know you say it got underfunded. I never know if that means did you borrow against it? Did it get invested poorly? I'm not sure about that. But I'm just saying in the past, 50-50 was not an irresponsible number to give to state workers or teachers. I agree with that on the roads. <laughs> say that much. <laughs> um, and that's it, I guess. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Alan. Monty. Hi, Monty Mason, Morrisville. Uh, I don't want this to sound like it's a, you know, coming down on you guys, but I just want to uh, give my opinion on s some issues with the retirement fund of the state. I was a state employee for 18 and a half years. When I went to work for the state, I was promised something. They said, like, we can't pay you what you can make out in the public sector per hour for wh what you do. And uh, if you come to work for us, and uh, you make a career out of this, we will give you uh, some guarantees when you're done. We'll give you a pension, and we'll give you health insurance. That's what they told us. We gave up money for that. Those other, other places out there, out in the, in the uh, public sector were making a lot more money than we were, but we gave up something for a promise. And then 7.5% of our payroll that we got went into that pension fund. That's something that's not discussed with people like John McClory and David Coates on the public radio telling about the unfunded mandates of the retirement fund. Where did that money go? I remember when it was funded at 103% for state workers and about 89% for teachers. That was around the time of the 2008 recession. And we've never rebounded really from that. That and, and the fact that we've got more people retiring now and less people coming into the workforce has hurt. But I'm getting kind of, you know, irritated behind the neck about people saying, oh, those retirees from the state and the retirees from the teachers and even law enforcement. We have people that have spent their whole lives in law enforcement, the same situation. Those people earned that money. And they were promised something at that time. And I'm just, I'm not coming down on you guys, but I'm just stating my opinion. That I've never had a chance to say that in public before. Just want you guys to take that into consideration. Thank you. I just want to say that um, I don't disagree with anything that you said. And um, um, the trouble for us now is we know it's our responsibility to live up with the commitment with, that we made around retirement funds. And we have to do that. We made a promise and we have to do that. But it does put tremendous pressure on um, the state budget to stay within the constraints of the budget 
um, with that tremendous pressure that's out there. And you're absolutely right. When the market went down in the Great Recession in 2008, it was a, a, a terrible hit to our retirement funds. And we didn't make contributions um, over a period of time as a state um, that we should have. And it's coming back to bite us now. But it's not that we don't want to um, respect the work that people have done. It's that um, it's putting pressure within the budget cycle itself. Uh, I just want to add on the retirement issue. Uh, both uh, my wife and I uh, were state employees, and we both uh, benefit from the retirement programs at, at this point. I left state government in 1996. My wife retired more more recently. Um, so I, uh, just from a very personal point of view, uh, I, the, the commitment to state employees um, and public employees uh, and teachers is one that I think I feel very, very strongly about. As Senator Westman said, however, in order to keep that commitment, um, it means there's not a whole lot else we can do uh, in terms of uh, programs and activities that we may support in the state budget. There's, there's very little room uh, to do anything uh, when we uh, truly keep that commitment to the retirees. Thank you. Um, you, know, you know, here we sit side by side, shoulder to shoulder, not as political partisans, but as citizens of a community, I think, who care very deeply about this state and very deeply about each other. Many of us struggle. One out of four Vermonters visited their food shelves last year at some point over the year to make ends meet. That number in Morrisville was just below 30%. We're not going to tax our way out of this, but we'll keep our commitments to the folks like Monty was talking to and to others because we care about each other because we'll figure this out. We'll do it with civility. It won't be easy. If we're not careful, all we'll do is a significant cost shift. The obligations of the state, while trying to meet them, that are unable to do because of this incredible pension obligation, must not simply be passed down to the locals, who essentially only have the property tax. I don't believe the 99% should have to figure out a way to solve this, but I'm confident working together, Republicans and Democrats and progressives, will figure this out. In the little town of Woodbury on the walls of their, of their gym, in huge letters, are the letters T-E-A-M, team, together, everyone achieves more. And that's the spirit. I think we'll figure this out. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to say thank you for, um, um, thank you for your support in, in the past. And I really appreciate being able to represent you. Now, uh, Lizzie Craig. Hi. Um, so you might be wondering, like, why am I here? Um, I have been fortunate enough to um, been afforded a lot of opportunities that have fed into my passion for service, as Shap introduced me um, with. And part of that has allowed me to discover how important community is. Um, so that's kind of why I thought this would be a good opportunity to build a stronger community, because um, students in a community only build stronger Community, yeah, yeah, okay, said that word enough. Um, I will now go over some brief general announcements. Um, welcome to town meeting. Whether this is your first or 50th time coming, we have a flyer to provide background and common phrases you'll hear today and help you participate fully in today's town meeting. The annual town report is the historical record of the town. Inside it, you will find department reports as well as reports from many community organizations if you do not have a town report or a town meeting flyer, you may pick one up 
at the front table or raise your hand at this time and a Boy Scout will be glad to get you one. Um, the select board proudly dedicates the 2019 town report to George and Dorothy Cook for their 40 years of service to Morristown Rescue and Emergency Medical Services. Please see their full dedication on the first page of the town report. Morning, everyone. I just wanted to um, read a thank you note from the Cooks regarding the dedication that uh, we did for them. And, and also to, to say uh, I was uh, very fortunate to have served on Morristown Rescue for over 35 years with them. And I can tell you right now, if you ever are in an accident or ever need uh, 911 services, those are the people you want there. They are outstanding care providers. And um, I think no one is more deserving to have the, the town report dedicated to them. So I'll read this note. Uh, it says, Dear Morristown Select Board, what a wonderful surprise to open the town report and see that it had been dedicated to us. We are deeply honored and humbled. As charter members of the Morristown Rescue Squad, founded in 1975, we have been proud to volunteer our services as EMTs, board members, instructors, and leaders for the past 45 years. Wow, between the two of us, that's 90 years. We have dedicated our lives to helping others in a time of need and have enjoyed seeing the changes that have occurred in emergency medical care. Everyone here and at Morristown Rescue should be very proud of where your rescue squad is today with the state-of-the-art equipment, skilled paramedics, and a very knowledgeable chief. We are sorry we could not be present today, but we are attending the town meeting in Hyde Park. Our time spent on rescue could have not have happened without the support of the select board and the entire community. We thank you, the select board, the residents of Morristown for this honor. Dorothy and George Cook, thank you. This meeting is being recorded. Anyone wishing to speak must come forward to the microphone in the center aisle and state his or her full name before addressing the assembly. If you cannot get to the center aisle, a portable microphone can be brought to you. We remind you that there's no smoking in school buildings or on school grounds. <coughs> Cell phones should be turned off except for emergency response personnel. People's Academy seniors Joe Bonanno, Joseph Dewan, and Anna Mae Brown will be providing childcare in the middle level learning center. Um, that's through that door. Um, snacks will be, will be provided. The Morseville Soccer Club Euro Trip is providing concessions this morning. The donations will benefit the boys' soccer trip to Italy in July. Um, there will be no luncheon today. Several groups and organizations are sponsoring tables here in the gym. Stop by, talk to the representatives, and see their displays. Every 10 years, the U.S. Constitution requires an enumeration of all persons in the United States, commonly referred to as the census. For the next 10 years, the numbers produced in this effort will help determine how more than $675 billion will be distributed to states and localities annually through more than 65 federal programs. These programs include special education funding, school lunch programs, Meals on Wheels, field assistance, Medicare, housing re rehabilitation, community economic development and revitalization block grants, early childhood education, cooperative extension offices, and more. This year, you will have the option of responding online, on the telephone, or with a traditional short form response. Look for your invitation to respond in the mail at your door. It is critical that everyone participate and that all household members be included. The 2020 decennial census begins in Mark. March. <laughs> Make sure that your community counts. Thanks to the entertainment for opening the music, Allen Church has been performing at our town meeting for over 10 years. And thank you to the PA middle level fourth through sixth grade musical theater students for their participation. On behalf of the town of Morristown, we want to thank Brian Rafferty and the staff at People's Academy for their cooperation and the great job they do every year in setting up for the annual meeting, especially to Peter Guillen for the sound system.
The annual meeting of the town of Morristown, Vermont for March 3rd, 2020 is declared open at 9.47 p.m. The town administrator, Dan Lindley, and finance director, Tina Sweet, are seated in the front row. Neither one is a Morristown resident. If there is no objection, they will speak if necessary. The warning is published on pages six through eight of your town report. Are there any other corrections to be noted in the published unofficial warning? Uh, I just want to note that I do have a blind spot due to the uh, flag in front of me. So if somebody's raising their hand over to my right uh, and I'm not responding, just move a little past the flag. But I don't want to do anything that would be considered desecration of the flag by moving it. My political future would be done. Yeah. <laughs> Unless there is an objection, I will waive the reading of the entire articles. Articles to be voted by Australian ballot are Article 1, to elect three select board members of the town of Morristown, one for a term of three years, one for a term of two years, and one for the remainder of a three-year term. Article 2, shall the voters approve a non-binding resolution to strongly support the completion of the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail and urge the governor and legislature to jointly develop a plan that will ensure the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail is completed by 2025. The polling place for the Australian ballot is the community meeting room of the municipal building at 43 Portland Street. The ballot box was declared open at seven this morning and shall remain open until seven this evening. We will now move to conduct the traditional open session of the annual town meeting. To vote on articles, you must be a registered Morristown voter. If you have not done so already, please pass through the checklist to my right and receive a colored voting ballot that you will show during a voice vote from the floor, or deposit it at the ballot box located in front of the dais if a vote by paper ballot is called. If a paper ballot vote is requested, you will be given instructions on the procedure. The first order of business is to elect a moderator. Bob Beeman will proceed. Article three, to elect a moderator of the town meeting for the ensuing year. Shap Smith has been your moderator, moderator for the past year. Nominations are now in order for one to serve as moderator until the next annual meeting. Are there any nominations? I'll nominate Shap Smith. I have a nomination of Shap Smith has been placed in nomination. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all in favor of electing Shap Smith as your moderator for the ensuing year, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. You have elected Shap Smith as your moderator. Robert's rules of order are the basic rules of order for this meeting, except where Vermont law takes precedence. The body cannot change Vermont state law as much as you might want to. But you can change Robert's rules with a two-thirds vote if you desire. You can see page 11 in your town report for more information on that. An article must be moved and seconded by the body, then restated by the moderator before it is under consideration and debate on the article may begin. After the moderator restates the motion, the person who made the motion has the right to speak first in the debate. Articles may have only one amendment at a time associated with them, and amendments to an article, likewise, may only have one amendment at a time associated with them. After you've spoken once on a particular article, you will not be recognized a second time during discussion on that article or amendment until all other voters who wish to speak on the issue for the first time are given an opportunity to do so. Robert's rules only allows a given speaker to speak twice on a given motion and limits the duration of speeches to 10 minutes. Division of the House can be requested by one voter before or after a voice vote. Vermont state law provides for a paper ballot vote on the request of seven voters 
unless the town has made other arrangements, again, before or after a voice vote or after a division of the house. So that is seven people may request a paper ballot and the paper ballot will be allowed. Otherwise, it will be a voice vote or a division and a division is where people stand, okay? All motions, remarks, and discussion, including moving the previous question, must be addressed to the moderator. Anyone wishing to speak must come forward to the microphone in the center aisle and state his or her full name and speak into the microphone so that comments may be heard by the entire assembly. If you cannot get to the center aisle, a portable microphone can be brought to you by a Boy Scout member. Your speeches must be confined to the merits of the question. You will not be allowed to engage in personal attacks on a member of the body or their motives. Just a reminder, this is supposed to be a civil discourse, and my hope is that today, that to the extent that there's a debate, we can have one that will make us proud of the longstanding town meeting tradition. Vermont state law prohibits consideration of articles that you have not been warned. This means you cannot take binding action under, art, under the article other business, and you can't amend warned articles such that they would deal with business that hasn't been warned. Reconsideration of an article is allowed by Vermont state law until a point is reached where the body has begun working on another article. This means that if you voted down an article, a motion can be made to reopen consideration of this article by a person on the prevailing side. <clears throat> and uh, so I will have to ask you how you voted if you do move for reconsideration, and that will be public just so that you know. However, once the next article is on the floor, no more action can be taken regarding the previous article at this meeting. My role as moderator is to help you accomplish the business you intend to do. It is not to take a position on any of the particular articles. Please ask questions if you don't understand what is happening or if you think what is happening is wrong for some reason or if you want to do something but you don't know how to proceed. This is all about making sure that the will of the people of the town of Morristown is done. Please tell me if you feel I am ruling improperly. <laughs> I'm used to it, I have kids. You have the right to challenge the moderator's rulings. Only registered voters of the town may vote at annual or spe special meetings of the town. Non-residents and unregistered voters may be allowed to speak with the approval of two-thirds of the assembly. During a voice vote, please remain silent, except when you're voting, <laughs> right? Um, and additionally, you may not raise your hands or stand if a physical count is required. We appreciate your cooperation. We will, do, are there any questions? Yes. Morning, Mr. Buckwheat. Um, as a, I'm going to clarification. I thought a Roberts rules, unless it's been changed, um, if, if it hasn't. But in the past, I thought cause we had some pretty hefty, feisty meetings up here in the past, and and, uh, and they had to draw a, uh, a break in the meeting ten years ago because uh, they said I couldn't speak. And in Roberts rules, I figure I, I remember. It was 30 minutes you could speak on an article. I believe it's, I, I believe it's 10. It was, it, I, I'm gonna yeah. check my book, and has it changed in the last 10 years? Uh, that's what I have written down. Um, I have the book here if you wanna take a look. Yeah. I am willing to be proven wrong. No, I'm just, I'm just remember the, the uh, confrontation we had up here with everybody in the, in the select board, and it was, and I remember that I was right they took a break and came back so I could speak for 30 minutes on an article. Okay. And I'm going to check my book when I get home. I still miss it unless it's been revised. That's all I'm saying. It felt like 30 minutes. Huh? It felt like 30 minutes. Oh, it did? Okay. <laughs> well, you're probably going to hear it again then. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So we'll now proceed to the business of the uh, town meeting. Article four, in town meeting to elect all town officers required by law except for those officers to be elected by Australian ballot under article one above. 
The term of office is for one year unless otherwise noted and begins at the close of town meeting. These officers may be elected by voice vote except for the office of Lister. For that position, the assembly may ask the clerk to cast one vote for the elected candidate. Seconds are not required for nominations. Motions for nominations to cease and the clerk cast one ballot are not necessary. If those serving are present, please stand and be recognized. Nominations are now in order for the election of first constable. A first constable may serve as district court officer and may remove disorderly people from town meeting. <laughs> <clears throat> Do I have a nomination for first constable? Uh, I believe that this would be out of order. Right now we're in the meeting um, and we're considering uh, whether uh, nominations for first constable. Well, we just looked it up on the internet and it says you can speak to 10 minute segment, not to 30 minutes. What's your time? You can make you can speak two ten minute segments, yeah. not just ten minutes. Two ten minute segments. But in the past, you could speak the whole twenty minutes, not thirty minutes, but it was twenty minutes. So apparently it changed. But we can speak on an article two ten minute segments, which you didn't state. You said only ten minutes on an article. Okay. <laughs> Well, I believe that it's 10 minutes for each of the two times that you're allowed to speak. On the same article, you can speak two Right, you can speak seconds. two, so you're allowed to speak not twice, not each time for 10 well, minutes. I didn't state that, I want to clarify it so everybody knows the, the Robert's rules, okay? All right, thank you. Okay. Are there nominations for First Constable? Uh, Eric Dodge's name has been uh, Placed in nomination for first constable. Are there other nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, Eric Dodge as first constable, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And you've elected Eric Dodge as first constable. Second constable, a second constable may serve as district court officer and may remove disorderly people from town meeting. This is a one term, uh, or is a one year term of office and Garth Christensen is currently serving. Are there any nominations for second constable? The name of Garth Christensen has been placed in nomination for second constable. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor of electing Garth Christensen, second constable, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And you have elected Garth Christensen, second constable. We will now move on to the position of grand juror. A grand juror is responsible for inquiring into and providing information to the proper authorities of criminal offenses. This officer is mostly, this office is mostly obsolete. The state's attorneys provide most of the criminal investigation. Nonetheless, it is still an office that we uh, need someone to serve in. Richard Sargent is currently serving, but is not seeking reelection. This is a one year term. Are there any nominations for grand juror? Nominate Julia Companion. The nomination, uh, Julia Companion has been nominated for grand juror. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor of electing Julia Companion as the grand juror, please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and you have elected Julia Companion to be the grand juror. We'll now move on to the office of town agent to convey real estate. The town agent to convey real estate con executes deeds on behalf of the town. It is a one-year term of office. Uh, Todd Thomas is currently serving. Are there any nominations for the town agent to convey real estate? The name of Todd Thomas has been placed in nomination for the town agent to convey real estate. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none. All those in favor of electing Todd Thomas as the town agent to convey real estate, 
please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And you have elected Tom Thomas to serve as the Todd Thomas to serve as the town agent to convey real estate. We'll now move on to the position of town agent to prosecute and defend suits. The town agent's duty consists of assisting when litigation is in progress at the request of the select board. Currently, Richard Sargent is uh, the town agent to prosecute and defend suits. He is not seeking re-election. It is an office that has a one-year term. Are there nominations for the town agent to prosecute and defend suits? Julia Companion has been nominated to be the town agent to prosecute and defend suits. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor of electing Julia Companion as the town agent to prosecute and defend suits, please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and you have elected Julia Companion as the town agent to prosecute and defend suits. We'll now move on to the position of town clerk. The town clerk records, preserves, and certifies the public records of the town, issues dog, marriage, civil union, and hunting and fishing licenses, as well as motor vehicle renewals. The town clerk also runs the local elections, serves as clerk of the Board of Civil Authority, and hears tax abatement requests and tax appeals. The term is for three years. Sarah Haskins is currently serving as the town clerk. Do I hear any nominations for town clerk? I nominate Sarah Haskins. Sarah Haskins has been nominated to serve as town clerk for a three-year term. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor of electing Sarah Haskins as the town clerk, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. You have elected Sarah Haskins to serve as town clerk. We'll now move on to the position of treasurer. Treasurer keeps the town's accounts, invests money with the approval of the legislative body, in this case the select board, keeps a record of the taxes voted, and pays orders drawn on him or her. Sir, currently, Sarah Haskins is serving in that role, and the term of office is three years. Are there any nominations for the office of treasurer? Sarah Haskins' name has been placed in nomination for the Office of Treasurer. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor of electing Sarah Haskins as Treasurer for the Town of Morristown, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those we'll opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And you have elected Sarah Haskins to serve as Treasurer of the Town of Morristown. Now we will go on to the Office of Trustee of Public Funds. The trustee, uh, the trustee of Public Funds manages, invests, and reports on real and personal property held in trust by the town. It is a three-year term of office. Sarah Haskins is currently serving. Are there any nominations for Trustee of Public Funds? Sarah Haskins' name has been placed in nomination for the Trustee of Public Funds. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor of electing Sarah Haskins, trustee of public funds, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. As appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and you've elected Sarah Haskins as trustee of public funds. We will now move on to the office of Lister. The Lister appraises property within the town for the purpose of property tax assessment. It is a three-year term. It is also an election by ballot. The uh, Maria Ward is currently serving, but is not seeking re-election. Are there any nominations for Lister? I nominate Brian Deaton. Brian who? Deaton. The name of Brian Eaton has been placed in nomination. Eaton. The name of Brian... Uh, Brian Yeaton has been placed in nomination. Are there any other nominations? If he's present, would he please stand to be recognized? Could you please stand? Okay. Thank you. Yep. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, <clears throat> uh, could the clerk cast one ballot 
for Brian Yeaton. Uh, Brian Yeaton has been elected um, Lister for a period of three years. We have another uh, Lister position open. Uh, Paul Griswold is currently serving and is not seeking re-election. This is a, uh, but it is actually for the remainder of a three-year term. Are there any nominations for this particular position of Lister? I nominate Charles Burnham. Charles Burnham has been nominated as a Lister. Charles, could you stand, please? <laughs> the name of Charles Burnham has been placed in nomination for the position of Lister. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, could the clerk uh, please cast one ballot for the position of Lister for, the, uh, for Charles Burnham? Charles Burnham has been elected Lister of the town of Morseville. Mr. Moderator, point of order, don't we have to still vote on cast, having the clerk cast that one ballot? Okay. Since you were the prior moderator, I will <laughs> defer. Uh, all those in favor of the clerk casting a ballot for Brian Yeaton as the lister, please signify by saying aye. Aye. As opposed nay. As appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and you have elected Brian Yeaton. Now the question is, shall the um, clerk be allowed to cast one ballot for the election of Charles Burnham? You ready for that question? Yes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Well, as opposed nay. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and Charles Burnham has been elected Lister by ballot by the clerk. Now the, uh, we have the position of library trustees. The tri trustees are responsible for managing the town library. Two, there are two trustees, uh, each with a term of five years. Currently, Meredith McGee and Julie Pickett are serving. Are there nominations for library trustee? The names of Meredith McGee and Julie Pickett have been placed in nomination for library trustees. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. You have elected Meredith McGee and Julie Pickett as library trustees. We'll now move on to Article 5. Article 5 reads, will the town vote to authorize the select board to establish a reserve fund for utilizing the surplus or money left over in the highway or municipal funds and authorize the select board to spend said funds for defraying future town expenses? Are you ready for that question? Would anybody like to move that particular article? I'll move it. So moved? Okay. <laughs> Discussion? I have a couple of questions for the boys. Yeah. Yeah, second. Second. <laughs> you may proceed. What is your balance in your, in your surplus now? Yeah. From last year or from the past? Last. At the end of, this, of the last fiscal year, 
the remaining balance from the highway department? Yeah. Do you have that figure? I think, the, I think the last winter there wasn't a balance left in the highway. There wasn't one left. Yeah, actually the highway was over last year. Overspent. Be, because of the, the highway department last year, I mean, it's all overspent. Because of the winter we had. By how much? Well, I don't have it. 1819. Yeah. Quite a lot. Quite a bit. Yeah. Roughly three hundred thousand. Roughly three hundred thousand dollars. Okay. What does the uh, what does the uh, one and a half percent or one penny bring? How much money does that bring in a year now? Currently, it's in the ballpark of sixty-six thousand dollars. One penny. One penny. Yeah. One penny. Sixty-six thousand. Yeah. Sixty-six thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any other discussion on Article 5? Article 5 is, will the town vote to authorize the select board to establish a reserve fund for utilizing the surplus or money left over in the highway or municipal funds and authorize the select board to spend said funds for defraying future town expenses? Are you ready for that question? Yes. If so, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and you have passed Article 5. Article 6 is, will the town vote real and personal property taxes to be paid to the treasurer in two equal installments with delinquent taxes and assessments having charged against them an 8% penalty after the second installment, an interest charge of 1% per month or fraction thereof for the first three months, and thereafter, one and a half percent per month or fraction thereof from the due date of such tax. Such interest shall be imposed on a fraction of a month as if it were an entire month. That's pursuant to 32 VSA section 5136. Payments are due in the hands of the treasurer by 4 p.m. on the due dates. Only official USPS cancellation marks will be accepted as postmarked mail that's pursuant to 32 VSA section 4773. Per its delinquent tax policy and Vermont statutes, that's 32 VSA section 5252, the town will immediately begin legal proceedings by turning all outstanding account balances over to an attorney for collection. The first installment to be paid on or before November 16th, 2020, and the second installment to be paid on or before May 16th, 2021. Do I have a motion to approve Article 6? So moved. A second. Second it. Could you identify who moved? Okay. Gary Nolan. Okay. Second? Who seconded? Me. Okay. So the question is, I will read this again. Will the town vote real and personal property taxes to be paid to the treasurer in two equal installments with delinquent taxes and assessments having charged against them an 8% penalty after the second installment and interest charges of 1% per month or fraction thereof for the first three months and thereafter 1.5% per month or fraction thereof from the due date of such tax. Such interest shall be imposed on a fraction of a month as if it were an entire month. Payments are due in the hands of the treasurer by 4 p.m. on the due dates. Only official USPS cancellation marks will be accepted as postmarked mail. Per its delinquent tax policy and Vermont statutes, the town will immediately begin legal proceedings by turning all outstanding account balances over to an attorney for collection. Is there any discussion? Yeah. Could you please come to the microphone and identify yourself? My name is Claudia Stauber. And uh, I wanted to know whether those percentages are statewide percentages or townwide percentages. <laughs> Scream. <laughs> the state sets those guidelines. That's what most towns have. Um, but towns can adopt their own um, figures. 
I'm asking because since I've lived here 17 years, I was late once and just because of my own fault that I didn't think of it, but it was such a big penalty right away that I think that's almost uncalled for. Thanks. So the question is, shall Article 6 be adopted? Here, when I go to small claims court, which you all have to go to small claims court, and I was charging one and a half percent interest, and the judge told me that it was illegal, and he took the half percent right away. So I, I guess my question is, why does if the state says this is a guideline or if what the other towns do is it illegal? If it's one percent for me, it should be one percent for the towns. I know you cannot charge one and a half percent interest on small claims court. So I guess I need somebody to look into that. It's a different statute. Well, for the state, everything's different anyway. So, <laughs> but I don't think that's fair. So, I'd like to see the. I'd like somebody to check it out and find out, or who I can call and talk to them about it. Thank you. I believe that we do. Um, we have no control over changing those interest amounts. I believe those are set by state statute, but I don't know the reference to look them up at the moment. I believe what we have the ability to change if we so desire is the amount of penalty and how we charge the penalty portion of it. David. Thank you, Mr. Honorator. Uh, I used to represent towns doing tax collections, and I can tell you different towns do set different interest rates. Waterville charges no interest at all. Some of the towns charge 1% per month. They've always done it that way, so I presume there's statutory authority for it. So I just wanted to let the town know that different towns do have different policies with respect to setting the interest rate when taxes are delinquent. Is there any other discussion? Can I just speak from here? Everybody hear me? Yeah. Is it possible? It's being recorded, so be, I, th I think we would prefer okay. as much as we can hear you. Yeah, I think uh, it happened to me one time, what happened to Claudia. And I th I, what I was surprised at was that I was like there the next day, and I was like, whoa. Um, so I just wondered. The 1%, I don't have any problem, or even 1.5%, but with all today's technology, can't we prorate it? Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, the question is, will the town vote real and personal property taxes to be paid to the treasurer in two equal installments with delinquent taxes and assessments having charged against them an 8% penalty after the second installment and interest charges of 1% per month or fraction thereof for the first three months and thereafter 1.5% per month or fraction thereof from the due date of such tax. Such interest shall be imposed on a fraction of a month as if it were on an entire month. Payments are due in the hands of the treasurer by 4 p.m. On the due dates, only official USPS cancellation marks will be accepted as postmarked mail. Per its delinquent tax policy in Vermont statutes, the town will immediately begin legal proceedings by turning all outstanding account balances over to an attorney for collection. The question is, shall the <clears throat> body approve Article 6? You ready for that question? So all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, nay. Aye. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it, and you've approved Article 6. Article 7 is, will the town vote to authorize the total expenditures of $6,838,264 for the operation of the town with a total of $5,804,453 to be raised by taxes? Question is, and, and the select board's budget defines the total expenditures as shown in, on page 23 of the 
<clears throat> budget overview. Question is, well, do I have a motion to adopt Article 7? So moved. The uh, question has been, uh, Article 7 has been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion? Uh, ambulance service. The um, you said anticipated revenue. What is that? That's the money coming in from your calls. How much money a year do you make on this ambulance service? How much money do you lose? An accurate number. What's your loss on the ambulance service? Do you want me to just? Yeah. 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 Um, I know it was twenty thousand dollars last year. So currently, the the next year's budget, um, the estimated budget is six hundred thirty thousand yeah. dollars. Mean, roughly, there's a little rounding there. The estimated revenue um, is two hundred twenty seven dollars, two hundred twenty seven five hundred dollars. So the amount to be raised by taxes would be $402,566. That's not answering my question. Uh, uh, if you're doing a business, what are you bringing in for revenue? The people that don't pay, which a lot of them don't pay for oh, services, we, we what is off, your loss on the ambulance service a year? I think we, we wrote off $20,000 or so last year, yeah. or something like that, for, for, for people that, that, that couldn't pay. 19 and wrote off 20,000? Uh, yes. Doesn't sound like a profitable business. <laughs> Buckwheat, you're absolutely right. It is not a for-profit business. I, I know. I, we're, we're fortunate to be able to, uh, I mean, years past, we weren't able to bill insurances. That has been changed. We are now able to bill insurances to recover some of our taxpayer dollars to cover the expenses of our ambulance service. But it is, by it's and large, a taxpayer-funded organization. It's a losing proposition. Until you need them. And I know, I, I can tell you right now, when, we, when I was at the meeting, when we started the ambulance service way back, and it was brought up, and I brought it to you guys' attention before, and, I, and you got paid by me last, a year ago from the VA, but for services, it, they, it, was, it was voted on that anybody that was a more so resident would never pay for ambulance service calls. If you go back in the book, when we started the, the ambulance service, you'll probably find it unless it's been somehow deleted. But I remember the meeting, it was a hot, hot contested meeting. So if you go get a service call from, if you live in Morristown, you don't know how to pay service calls. And that, that is still correct today. Yeah. No. But money, why, did I, why did I get a bill then? The, the reason there is a, is it a copay, Tina? <clears throat> We bill all insurances for everyone. Everyone is treated the same. And what you can't, your insurance doesn't pay, if you can't afford to pay it, all you have to do is write a note asking that it be forgiven, and it is. That, that's how it's worked. Well, when I had to call for the ambulance, um, I never got a bill. It went directly to the VA. And I expect to get a bill. Well, that's our procedure, is we bill known insurances. How do you know I was, how do you know where to send it? Because the hospital gives us that information. Just like the hospital bills your VA, we would do the same. I would like to have that. If it ever happens again, I want to see the bill first. You're welcome to see it yeah. anytime you want. That way, then I will have to pay it. Okay? Okay. All right. That's the law. You wrote it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and just to clarify my words to you, Buckley, we don't ever want anybody to second guess calling 911 mm -hmm. because based on cost. So our residents, as Tina has said, there may be a bill sent, but if you can't pay it, it's a simple note. Well, I understand, but I, I never got a, all I got was a, uh, the voucher from the VA saying they paid it. So what did they pay that for? I never knew they sent it, they sent someone. You did, if I went to the hospital, now, emergency, I get a bill. Yeah, I forward it to the VA. You can identify yourself. I'm David Pullo from Marstown. Uh, 
Ed Wiltz and I do have something in common. We believe in taking care of our roads. In the Article 7, there's $190,000 uh, for paving. Could the uh, select board or Dan address what that paving is for, please? David, um, as a, I, uh, David was kind enough to ask me to have this all prepped for him a little bit. So right now there's also roughly $80,000, and I, I do have a tendency to round numbers just so everybody knows. There's roughly $80,000 that we have from past year's budgets. When, when you see an article or a paving amount, that's all we spend it on. We don't spend it on anything else. So from last year's paving, we have $80,000 left over. On this year's budget, there's $190,000. Um, our plan for the past number of years, we've been working on Randolph Road, trying to get it completed roughly at a mile at a time. We have a mile and a quarter left on Randolph Road to pave. Um, the highway uh, foreman has asked that we pave stagecoach from um, the intersection of Morristown Corners to Katie's Falls Road. Um, and we had a section of stagecoach wash out last year uh, during the floods that we need to repave over that. Um, roughly speaking, uh, a mile of road is about $100,000 to pave, so that's $270,000. It's a mile and a quarter on Randolph, it's a mile and a quarter on Stagecoach, um, and the little section on Stagecoach that needs to be repaired will roughly eat up that budget. If I could ask a, follow a question, please, Mr. Moderator. You may. Uh, Dan, how much does it cost to pave a road, approximately? is roughly $100,000 a mile. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, living in the Marstown Corners neighborhood that Marstown Corners Road from Route 100 to Marstown Corner, which is approximately six tenths of a mile, should be paved as well. So I'd like to move to amend Article 7 by increasing the total expenditures by $60,000 so that the new expenditure would be $6,898,264 for the operation of the town with the total being increased by 60,000 as well to $5,864,453. Hopefully I'll get a second. Is there a second? So uh, there is a motion to amend Article 7 to increase the paving budget by $60,000 to, as I read it, $250,000. Is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Ronnery. Uh And that would change the total town expenditure to $6,890,000. Two hundred and sixty-four thousand, with a total of five hundred, five five million eight hundred and sixty-four thousand four hundred fifty-three to be raised by tra taxes. Do I have that correct? Yes, Mr. Moderator. That amendment, uh, that motion to amend, is uh, appropriate. Um, the question is: Shall Article Seven be amended as proposed? Is there any discussion? Uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, perhaps it would make sense if uh, Sarah is able to, to let the voters know how much that would increase their town taxes, uh, for example, per $100,000 of assessed value. So for those who didn't hear, a penny on the tax rate raised is about $60,000. Is there any other discussion of the amendment? Uh, one other uh, interested voter would like to know, is there a better product of asphalt that can be used that will last longer than we're currently using? Anybody like to speak to I, I believe that's directed to the uh, town 
officials and I, I can tell you we're at the mercy of the, the plants to generate the material. Now, Buckwheat is in that business, and I, I have no issue in speaking to the quality of the product we get, because I don't know a thing about the makeup of blacktop. I think that would be, uh, Mr. Lowe, yeah. there are other people in front of you waiting for discussion. If you want to, if neither of them are going to speak to that particular issue, if you would like to have discussion on that particular issue, I'm David Bickford from Morristown. I'm fortunate or unfortunate enough to live on Randolph Road. I really appreciate the fact that you put a surface on Randolph Road. There's a section just below our house where the water over the years has frozen at this time of year, creating a lot of bumps. And the new blacktop that was put down this fall has already started to crack. So my question is, is the highway department making an assessment of the underlying reasons that some of these sections of road are breaking up? For example, the water, and taking steps to alleviate that. I can tell you the highway department assesses that every time they drive a snowplow over the top of that bump. Uh, and your point is, is well taken. Our money for the paving budget is spent and when Dan gives you the estimate of a mile for $100,000, that is a shim coat. That is a surface coat of approximately an inch and a half in depth. That does not mean we bomag or take up the pavement that's currently there, grinding it, working on the underlayment, and then laying down a new surface coat. That is much more expensive than $100,000 per mile. But yes, the highway department does look at those issues where we, we don't want to just waste money laying pavement down and have it destroyed the very next year. I live on Washington Highway. We, in the first, uh, the first time in about 30 years, got a new surface coat two years ago on that road. And I can tell you the same thing is there because we didn't do any work underneath. We simply put a new surface coat on it. And we have to look at the culverts are looked at. If there is water gathering on the uphill side of the road, our highway foreman will look at that and, and determine whether or not we need another culvert in that area or better ditching. Certainly, that's a valid point, and we are always assessing the roads. Um, we try and get the culverts replaced prior to doing any paving on the road. Randolph Road, you, over the last few years, residents that use that road have known that they've had detour several times because of the road being closed due to a culvert replacement, and we always do that in advance of uh, the surface paving. I would be glad to have the uh, uh, foreman for the highway department come and talk to me because this is, a, this is a, a case where, for the last 20 years, there's been a problem here and seems to have been missed in that amount of time. Thank you, David. Uh, Kevin, can you stand up for us, please? The highway foreman is here. He's on the, in the back in the bleachers. Kevin Barrows was uh, hired by us this year. Uh, in his very first year, he hasn't even completed a year with us and uh, has responded to, I think, a lot of topic, but the Halloween storm that occurred. Uh, they've, he's done a fantastic job. He is always open to uh, suggestions and considerations of the roads. Uh, if you aren't able to reach him right at the highway garage, you can, uh, through the town offices, uh, make that happen. Uh, our roads over the last three years have been the recipient of many thousands of dollars, uh, all our tax dollars, whether it was the state doing it or us. Uh, our town is coming along greatly. It's a much nicer place to drive in now than it was three years ago. But there is continuous work to be done, and I, I'm a big proponent for infrastructure work. That infrastructure includes what's underneath the roads. So to your point, David, I agree with you. There are sections of our road that we need to look at before putting any more pavement down uh, and, and fixing the problem underneath rather than just patching all the top of it. If I can speak to uh, the amendment itself. You may. So when we... When we take our dollars we have to spend in the next year's budget and our proposal, and we target different areas. Now, Dan has explained that we, the Randolph Road, we've been trying to do a mile per year. What I would say is uh, we don't necessarily have that written in stone. I really don't want to see our taxes go up any further than they already are. Our proposed budget this year is at a percentage higher than any of us was comfortable with, but it was the very best budget we could bring forth to you folks. I would say that we can reassess the Randolph Road portion, uh, bring it up for discussion, 
and talk about whether or not the money is better spent on that section of the road, Dave, that you're discussing in your amendment. Um, I, I, I would not be in favor of the amendment only because our taxes are already high. I don't want to increase that, but I think we can look at different roads in the town than we've already targeted for our paving dollars for next year. Are you speaking to the amendment? Uh, I'm speaking on the highway department here. Okay, so right now, the uh, appropriate thing to speak to is the amendment, the question of whether we will amend the article to add $60,000 to the paving budget. And if you, if, if you would like to speak to that, uh, Lee, that's appropriate. Is there any other discussion on this particular amendment? Mr. Lowe? Yes, Eric asked me about the blacktop. Yes, there is different grades of blacktop you buy. You can buy the cheap stuff, which won't last, medium, and then the top grade. So if we're, I don't know what Dan's, uh, what Dan's buying for, for the uh, mix, but there is different mix grade you buy. If you buy the cheap stuff, you're not going to get the years out of you. And, uh, and to answer the fellers' were a question over here on Randolph Road, the only way you're going to do that road is reclaim it because it's all clay. And you, you, can, you can put all you want. It's got to be all dug out, new mirror fire fabric drainage to make it right. It, just, it cost a million dollars a mile to do a re full road bone. So, you know, but anyway, that's the point to clarify that for you. Ed, are you going to speak to the amendment? Yes, uh, just for clarification, it sounded to me like uh, David made an excellent suggestion for getting his road paid. Uh, <laughs> I'd remind uh, the member we're not supposed to speak to personally. About well, that. I had to refer to what he was talking about. It's and it should be clarified that if this sixty thousand is is uh, approved is it supposed to be dedicated? If it is, I've got some other amendments coming for our, for our dirt road. So just a point of clarification on is, is this supposed to be dedicated to that one road? Uh, I, I believe that that was the intent of uh, Mr. Polo. However, that is not actually stated in the amendment, the amendment is solely for an increase to the budget. So the question is, shall Article 7 be amended to uh, increase the total expenditure to $6,898,264 with the total of 500, $5,864,453 dollars to be raised by taxes and the line item for paving be, being increased by $60,000. Are you ready for that question? So all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Nay. The nays appear to have it. The nays do have it and you have declined to amend Article 7 as proposed. So now the question is, shall the Article 7 be adopted? Is there a discussion? Sarah Russell, Morrisville. I just want to address our uh, EMS, fire, and police. Our taxes cover those things, yes, so you pay, and your insurance rates, so if you own a home, your house insurance rates are drastically improved by the fact that you have those services in your community. So um, if you live, in, for example, in the town of Waterville, you are relying on Johnson Fire Department and their response time is averaged into your house insurance. So the fact that you live 30 minutes from a fire response increases the insurance that you're paying on your home for fire insurance. So 
yes, our taxes cover those things and they're very important, but the fact that if you call the ambulance, they're going to respond quickly and immediately, not only is your health greatly improved by that outcome, but your insurance rates are also adjusted for those things. Hi, I'm Sherry Giroux. I live in Morristown and just a similar topic. Um, I wanna maybe change, share a different perspective about thinking about EMS or fire as a business. They are not businesses, they are public services. And I think, I think it's quite interesting. Many towns do this, uh, particularly with EMS, because there is a payment faction there that the towns rely on that revenue. And I think that's uh, just a very tricky notion there, uh, as opposed to maybe considering that surplus dollars that we could do things with. Um, it, it, it's just not, it's not, yes, there is a budget. Yes, those funds need to be, uh, managed carefully, but it, it's not a business. These are public services, and I'm so thankful to live in a town in a district that has such a strong mutual uh, aid system, and that should any of us be in the unfortunate situation to need these services, that we have them to come to our aid. So thank you for that. Jane Campbell, um, I don't know much about asphalt, um, but I'm, I'm guessing that the big, big trucks that drive on Stagecoach Road and Randolph Road eat up the pavement faster. And if that's true, I would ask the select board to look into the possibility of, of keeping those trucks on the state highway and off these roads that have to keep being repaved. Thank you. Theodore Kasparian, uh, Morristown. I just want to make a, a connection between the amount of time it takes for those roads to break down again and how the climate is actually directly creating those, those issues. Uh, every effort you make to uh, ameliorate the climate change issues means your roads will last that much longer and you have to spend that much less to fix them every year. The comment about keeping the trucks off the road, we pay a price to drive on those roads, believe me. And we get permits every spring, you gotta have a permit. And if you don't have a permit for over 60,000 pounds and you get pulled over by DOT and they weigh you up, you're gonna pay $5,000 or more in fines. So, and the other, the other thing about these roads, which I'm gonna bring up to the select board sometime, maybe the next meeting is, all these cracks, it's, it's frost cracks. And that when they settle down in the spring and the summer, you ought to get a company to come in and treat them, and fill them in. That will keep the water in the summertime from going down in those roads and setting there all the time. That's, the state highways do it every year. They have the two, two companies in Vermont to do them. And I think that would be, it's not that expensive. It's, it's, uh, they're doing it with a better product now. The product they were using wasn't working. It would fall out. Now it's not. It will seal them up, and the water will not go down in there and set and collect. And then when the winters come, they'll look at the Randolph Road. It looks like hell. Brand new pavement. It's a mess over there. All over. Some of it's going to fall right out in chunks. I was all there yesterday looking at it. So just a little idea to fix them up. You can afford some treatment after the fact you pay them. Okay? Hi, my name is Olga Mardach de Clerc, resident of Morristown. I actually wanted to propose, I guess, a solution um, for EMS. I'd like to help organize a fundraiser. Um, I was a former EMT paramedic in New York City before moving up here. Um, and so one of the things that's um, important in um, EMS is not just paying for having the ambulances available, but also the training that um, a lot of people who are actually volunteers need. Um, so I'm thinking I'd like to work with them to fundraise within our town and um, come up with ideas. Maybe we can raise $20,000 um, to help offset some of, the, um, some of the, the budgets, but maybe can help them also so they can continue training 
Um, I'd love to see a campaign where we encourage our high school students to become first aid and CPR certified. I'd be more than willing with my husband to volunteer to do that because that actually um, increases survivability because we know in, there's times of the year, times of the day when EMS may be bit busy, but having someone who knows how to do CPR first aid could actually make a huge difference. So I'm just, my name's Olga. If anyone's interested in helping me organize that fundraiser at the end, I'll be in the back and I will try to coordinate with someone in that department to see how we can do that. Question is, uh, Julia. Sorry. Um, Julia, me, just before you start, Olga, could you see me after the meeting, please? Yeah. Thank you. Um, Julia Campania Morristown, while we're on the, the budget in general, could someone speak to on page 23? You've added a line item of 16300 for a bathroom at the Oxbow, and I know there was a lot of press about this earlier in the year. Can someone clarify what this is? Is it just construction? Is it construction and maintenance? What will it be? Will it be year-round? Can we just get a sense of where that's going? Thank you. Yes, um, I think two years ago or so, the town approved an article to borrow um, $75,000 to construct bathrooms down at the Octo, and that's the loan payment for that. Um, those bathrooms are under contract and they should, will be built hopefully starting this May. So that's the loan pavement. Um, so open year round, how will it's, 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 it's uh, seasonal, we're looking um, probably May through the end of October, something like that. So it's just a seasonal bathroom. It's not a year round. Is there any other discussion on Article 17, or Article 7? Article 7 reads, will the town vote to authorize the total expenditure of $6,838,264 for the operation of the town with a total of $5,804,453 to be raised by taxes? Are you ready for that question? If so, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes do have it, the ayes do have it, and you have adopted Article 7. Article 8 is, will the town vote to raise taxes equal to one cent on the grand list to be dedicated to a Morristown Fire Department Capital Equipment Fund? Just uh, an FYI, one cent raises approximately $64,545 on the 2019 grand list. Do I have a motion? I move. So moved. Second? Second. Wally? Is there any discussion? Seeing, uh, oh. um, Wally Reeve, Morrisville, not for this year, because as you said, our taxes are going up. I do have some understanding of the cost of fire equipment, um, and it's not going down. Uh, fortunately, this town has provided the department with some excellent apparatus. But look at their call volume. It's going up every year. So to the select board and to Denny, maybe next year you might look at increasing that by half a cent. Because the cost of an engine, the last one I purchased was 354000 Or no, 254000 Today, to replace that engine is close to a million dollars. And it's going to need to be done. So next year, just consider that. Thank you. Question is, shall Article 8 be adopted? Are you ready for that question? So the question is, will the town vote to raise taxes equal to one cent on the grand list to be dedicated to a Morristown Fire Department Capital Equipment Fund? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it, and you have adopted Article 8. Article 9 reads, will the town vote to raise taxes equal to one cent on the grand list to be dedicated to a Morristown Highway Department Capital Equipment Fund? Do I have a motion? So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Is there a discussion? Leela 
Beer, Mud City. We've been waiting since October for the Mud City Bridge to be repaired and fixed. Now, uh, we've been told right along that it was going to be done, and uh, I've contacted the state, and the state said bridges and class two and three roads are the responsibility of the town. And I would like to know, um, earlier you said the town was over budget on the highway by 300,000. When we had the meeting with you guys, we were told that there was a surplus that they were going to use for the bridge. Now, I see nothing in here that specifies anything about the Mud City Bridge. So what's going on? If there, if there was a surplus, when we met you in December, where did that surplus go and how are we paying for this bridge? So the surplus money you're talking about is not money we were earmarking for that culvert replacement. The money we have in our budget every year, we put $30,000 into a bridge fund specifically for this kind of work. Currently, we are that uh, that amount in that fund is what, Tina? 148. And this current fiscal year would take it to roughly 180. 148? That's 148,000 at the end of last okay. fiscal year. So there was $148,000 in that budget, in that line item last year, and we've added another 30,000 in our current fiscal budget. So we're close to $180,000 in that fund. That is the money that we talked about using to repair that culvert. And how much is this culvert going to cost us? Have you figured that out yet? We're still, we have, the engineer is, done, is doing the design work. We're working on the permits. We have not gotten a, uh, because it hasn't gone out to bid, and we won't be able to put it out to bid until we get the, the process of the permits in place. Uh, but I mean, we'll why weren't the permits submitted to the Agency of Natural Resources a long time ago? This is since October. It, it was a Halloween storm, which is October 31st, the 1st of November. Uh, as was explained in that meeting, we had great hopes that we were going to be allowed a temporary bridge, which the state has in stock, which we felt for such purposes. The state declined our request because it is a loop road. It, nobody was cut off, and those bridges that they have on hand are for disasters where communities have people that are cut off because their road is eroded. So we were not allowed to have that bridge. Some time lapsed while we were waiting for that decision from the state. As soon as we got that decision, within a week, we began the process with the engineer to assess the damage, to assess what we were going to need, and to get the permits going and in place uh, to get that done. We worked expeditiously on this project because we want it done. It needs to be done. We have, to me, one of the cores of our foundation of our community is the farm up there that, that Dave has run for years. And their milk haulers are coming the long way around through the snow. I mean, it's just uh, very challenging. And uh, we want to get that road fixed, not just for, for Dave and his family, but for everybody that lives up there. So uh, we, want that, we want that culvert replaced. Now, Eric, so, so can I just, um, I, I've given a little latitude, Lee, because um, uh, you, you had meant you had wanted to ask question on Article 7, uh, and I think these questions are appropriate for Article 7, which we've passed, and we're now on Article 9, which is with regard to Capital Equipment Fund, which I believe is for the highway uh, capital equipment. So, but I wanted to give a little latitude because I understood that you had not gotten a chance to ask the question on Article 7. So, I just, we're, we're a little outside of the scope of what's appropriate for discussion of the current article. Well, what I wanted to say is, <clears throat> I've lived up there over 50 years. We used to have a little wooden bridge they changed it about 30 years ago to a culvert. Now, 
instead of spending all this money on engineers and putting a cement box in there like they're talking about, a, a culvert another 30 years would cost practically nothing to the town. I don't understand why we have to go through this whole rigmarole for a culvert. I, I can only answer to you that in today's construction practices, that concrete box culvert is a much better solution than just replacing the metal culvert that's currently there and has failed. We're trying to spend your money as wisely as we possibly can. We want to build a solution there that is going to last lifetimes, not just 30 years. Another metal culvert is simply going to fail. That box culvert is the best engineering that we have available to us and affordable based on the money we put into the, the culvert and bridge fund. Have you any idea when this is going to get started? Just, it's, it is a top priority. We, uh, that is absolutely as soon as our permits have been approved, it'll go out to bid. We are, I mean, our anticipation is this spring that it goes out to bid and we, the, the project is done this summer. That is our hopes, but there are so many things out of our control at state level until we get the permits back. We're in a waiting position at this point. So the question is, shall Article 9 be adopted? You ready for that question? Yes. Article 9 reads, will the town vote to raise taxes equal to one cent on the grand list to be dedicated to a Morristown Highway Department capital equipment fund? Shall that article pass? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 As opposed nay. Ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And you've adopted Article 9. Article 10 is, will the town vote to raise taxes equal to one half cent on the grand list to be dedicated to the Noise House Museum Repair and Maintenance Fund? Do I have a motion? A motion, Matt. So move, is there a second? second. Who, who had the second? I got the second. Back here is the first. I'm in, I'm who, in your flag. I got you. Who moved? Who moved? Patrick. Okay. So the question is, shall Article 10 be adopted? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will, the question is, will the town vote to raise taxes equal to one half cent on the grand list to be dedicated to the Noise House Museum Repair and Maintenance Fund? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. As opposed nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. You have adopted Article 10. Article 11 is, will the town vote to appropriate the sum of 113969 for the following purposes? 2900 for the Central Vermont Adult Basic Education, 900 for Capstone Community Action, 2500 for Central Vermont Council on Aging, 1750 for Clarina Howard Nichols Center, 15000 for Everyone Equals Morristown Community Center, 5,763 for Green Mountain Transport, Port, $1,000 for Justice for Dogs, $2,500 for Lamoille County Civic Association, $5,000 for Lamoille County Food Share, $1,000 for Lamoille County Habit for Human Habitat for Humanity, $3,900 for Lamoille County Mental Health Community Connections, $12,000 for Lamoille County Youth Center, Youth Rocks, $4,000 for Lamoille Day Services, $4,000 for Lamoille Economic Development Council, $3,000 for the Lamoille Family Center, $15,681 for Lamoille Home Health and Hospice, $1,000 for the Lamoille Housing Partnership, $1,500 for the Lamoille Restorative Center, $3,375 for the Lamoille County Special Investigation Unit, $10,000 for Meals on Wheels of Lamoille County, $1,000 for North Country Animal League, $5,200 for the Rural Community Transportation, $1,000 for the Retired Senior Vermont Program, and $10,000 for River Arts. Once again, for a total of $113,969. Do I have a motion? I move. David Ford has moved. Is there a second? Second. Did you get the second? Is there a discussion? Uh, 
Sunny Brink, Morrisville. Um, I'm uh, here representing Equals MC Square, the community center that is in town. I don't know how many of you know about it, but maybe many of you do. Um, the first thing that we'd like to do is we'd like to say thank you um, to a lot of our people that we're working with. Obviously, thank you to our neighbors in the town, the Morrisville town, and the residents. Um, our collaboration groups, we've been working with Behavioral Health and Wellness, the People's Academy High School, Girl Scout Troop 60278, the United Way, Morrisville Rotary, um, Harold Cross and John Duffy's Ping Pong Group. Thank you, John. Um, Meals on Wheels, uh, Youth for Youth in Vermont After School Program, Outright Vermont, the Moyle Restorative Center, Northern Vermont University and CCV, Vermont Fatherhood, and our newest one is Supervised Visitation. Um, so thank everybody if you're any of those entities here and all of you residents who have been supporting um, the community center. So I'm Billy Dunham, I'm a Mooresville uh, resident and um, I'm part of the E equals MC squared on board. Um, so hi everybody. Um, part of what I wanted to do today is just really um, talk to you guys about what our plans are moving forward and what we've accomplished this last year. Um, we have some information packets that um, Sunny has. I know that um, in the course of our first year we've served over 5,400 um, individuals on individual um, basis. It's between 100 and 150 um, different individuals but they've come to our center over the course of the last year 5,400 times. Um, we're an important third space for our youth. Um, we're located on 26 Union Street, um, and it's just so important um, for our community. We also um, have the Vermont Fatherhood Program, which is open on Tuesdays from 5.30 um, to 7. That is for anybody who's a father that wants to come and meet with other fathers to discuss what it's like to be a dad, um, which we know that our community doesn't have very many supports for our fathers. Um, the first and third Fridays is um, our program with Outright Vermont called uh, Friday Night Group. Um, it's an imperative um, resource for our community because we know that our LGBTQ community members don't have as many supports as they deserve. And then of course we have ping pong for anybody that's um, old enough uh, on Thursdays um, from six to eight, is that correct? Yeah? Yeah, okay, six to eight. Um, and we're always looking for um, people to engage. We recommend going to our website and um, getting um, uh, our newsletter that's out monthly. It's called The What's Up, um, just so you guys know what's going on. And we want feedback, so we really want your engagement because you guys help support us. Um, and just what's coming up, we're looking to um, next year, we're going to ask for more signatures to possibly increase the amount of money for appropriations. Um, and we're also looking to purchase the building that we're currently in so that we can expand the space so that we have open space for people to come in similar to this, not as big as the gym space, so that people have physical activity and, and room to do that during the winter months when we all know that we feel isolated and um, not socialized. So. Um, we look forward to continuing to support you. We've also submitted an official letter of support from the Community of Health Services of Lamoille Valley on behalf of health and wellness because part of the people that support us are um, trained clinicians during our after school program so that we have um, mental health services available right there at the um, center. So thank you very much for your time and we look forward to serving you guys. Uh, Nick Allen from Morrisville. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself. I, um, I'm the band director up at Lamoille Union High School, and I'm not sure where we fit into this, but uh, I'm taking over as director for the Morrisville Military Band uh, this summer, so I'm super, super excited about that. The numbers have been small, and I'm, I'm doing as much recruiting as I possibly can to, to bring it back uh, into full swing. Uh, we play on Thursday nights right out here, and um, the season's going to kick off on the 18th of June. We're going to have, um, it's going to be a pizza party, and, and we'll rehearse some of the summer's music. We're going to do it up at Lamoille Union. So if you have uh, kids from 6th grade all the way up uh, up into your 80s, um, well, 80s and 90s, we, we would love, love to have you to come out and to play. Um, I'll be here after if you'd like some more information. If not... Uh, like I said, we'll be at Lamoille Union on June 18th to kick off our season. Thanks. I'm a little short, so. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Haley West. I am the di director of the Lamoille County Youth Center, one of our other uh, youth centers in town. Hi, Sunny and Billy. Um, I think 
All of us believe that there's never enough safe spaces for youth after school. The majority of our population identify as part of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, so we do a really, um, we really focus on providing a safe after school space for each of our teens to be who they are, um, free of judgment. And we do a lot of programming with uh, the Lamoille Family Center. We also have worked with Outright Vermont and are working to just improve safe spaces in our community for teens. Um, thank you for your 15 years of support. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to stop by our table later. So thank you. Hi, my name is Joseph Pensack. I'm the new executive director of River Arts. I started this July, and I'm really thrilled to represent this organization, which now for 20 years has been serving uh, Lamont County and Morrisville. Um, if you don't know River Arts, we're right in the center of town. Uh, I would encourage you to stop in and say hi. Um, we offer art classes, a clay studio, uh, a space for community gatherings, we do uh, four art shows per year, uh, and all of these events are available to the general public and really serve our community. Um, we offer summer youth camps for kids, and of, of the uh, 5,500 uh, people who came through our doors, uh, a huge percentage of those that uh, sign up for our programs, over 30%, um, receive financial assistance. So our core mission is art for everyone, and we really want to be a truly your community arts center. So if you haven't engaged with River Arts before, please stop in and say hello. And I just want to say thank you for the town support. So I just wanted, yeah. Uh, last year, someone from the floor recommended that the select board meet with the uh, appropriation, the groups in the appropriation, and uh, our staff at the um, office put together a rotational presentation schedule. And it was very informative. So if you are interested, and every year we're going to be listening to and having our presentation from uh, maybe three, is it three, five, five different nonprofits that are listed here on the appropriation. If you're interested, check out the website for our agenda, and you can come to the meetings and ask questions too. And I think we start when? January or is it before? November, December. I'm sorry? November, December. November, December. So keep, uh, keep your eye out for that if you're interested. Thanks. And I just wanted to note that the appropriations requested by the above agencies are not submitted to the select board for approval. Um, the voters approve or disapprove the appropriations uh, for each of these agencies. Because there hasn't been a request for increase, the um, the are presented in one article. You may deal with any of the appropriations individually or collectively. It is divisible by a majority vote. So that would require a majority vote to divide the particular uh, appropriations. Um, so. Just a question or a point of clarification. Um, I, don't, I think it was last year where we had asked um, for some type of breakdown or to understand like how the money that's been given from the town. So is there, oh, I'm sorry, is there like a budget breakdown for each organization of like how that money's been used? Some of, the or, some of the organizations did submit it. Is that in, I didn't see any breakdowns and that's why I was asking. Is it, is it in, in the report? It's not really that. Tell what they do. I mean, they they do tell what they do, but it's not always a breakdown. Or but, like oh, they do know. tell what they do, but it's not always a breakdown. But is it in the report? No, no we page ninety-three. Hi, everyone. Allison Link, Clark Avenue, Morrisville. Um, I'm so glad to hear, Judy, that you mentioned that some of the groups are making presentations and that we're hearing from them. I think it was a few years back that I also had mentioned, and I'm still curious as to how we can look a little bit more strategically and looking at our appropriations into the future. And 
I just think, uh, just looking through the list, I'm so glad that we support all of these organizations. Uh, sometimes I, when I look, I think, well, why only Capstone gets 900 when another group gets another amount? And I know that's based on their request at the time, but if our town can uh, maybe set up a committee or uh, have a, a specific group from the select board or someone take some t extra time to think about appropriations going into the future, because I know once you get money, you're grandfathered in forever, I guess, no? What, there's a limitation on, what's the limitation? Or what's the, I, I, I was told that once you're in, you're in. Well, we want to know if you're, if you continue to need that amount. So we want to touch base with whoever gets these appropriations so we know it's still going to a good cause. Yes. You know, sometimes there's groups from out of the area that continue to ask money for mm -hmm. us. And that's why we started like really reaching out to these people and, and having them come to us come to our meetings, tell us what they do, what they use the money for, how much they need. Um, and that is listed on page 93 of the town report, the overview of how each appropriation is used and how much it is. Yes. And um, that is a big thing, so we... Um, right, and I'm glad, to see the, I'm glad to see this step taken, but I'm still looking for maybe more thought, strategic planning, some kind I of continuation. I think that uh, the organizations themselves are responsible right. for coming forward and for, for asking for more money. And it can be done from the floor. So there's two different avenues for people or the groups to apply for money. Correct. All of this being said, which I agree with and I know appropriations, but I also know Stowe, other communities are also looking at, okay, so this group will get a certain amount for a certain amount of time or what is our additional process around this? And I think looking into the future to look at some additional process would be helpful for the town to, to consider. Sunny Brink, Morrisville again. I think it says last year um, we voted on it every three years, every entity has to reapply for it again. Is that correct or is that wrong? It says it in. We haven't, we haven't said that yet, Sunny. We did talk about it. But... Right, so is that something that we should be bringing up again today or? Because we had talked about last year saying every three years each entity that's getting an appropriation shows where their money is going and then they reapply again. I, it's it's in the it's in the book, so I just was put, putting that out there. What page? Page ninety one. Yeah. Claudia Stauber again. Uh, I can speak for Justice for Dogs because I've been involved with them for a very long time, and I'm officially, I guess, the vice president. <laughs> Um, I know that all the money that comes to us from the town, and we do apply every year, we send a letter in to ask for funds again. Um, I do know where all that money goes, and it goes directly to the community again, because we are very, very locally based, and we really take care of the local dogs and cats. We trap and neuter and release a lot of uh, feral cats. Otherwise, we would have a million cats by now in Morrisville. <laughs> And um, so all the money goes directly back into the community. And Amy, who started Justice for Dogs, she really does go out to the community also. And you know, the little old lady that can't afford the cat food um, every week, and she gets like three extra cans, and she'll pick some up in her car. So we do a lot of outreach into the community that isn't even measurable in that sense. And I think a lot of the other organizations probably do very similar things. Um, of course, everybody can reach out to those organizations and say, well, how is the money actually used? And I think that's a fair question because, you know, a lot of times we don't know where the money goes. And so I just wanted to speak for Justice for Dogs. Thanks. So the question is, shall Article 11 be approved? Article 11 uh, is, will the town vote to appropriate the sum of 113969 for the following purposes? I'm going to read it again because I'm required to under state law, just so that you know. Hmm? Yes. Nina Church. 
I wonder if we can consider an amendment that, yeah, we, we'd like to approve this. We're proud of what we do for our, the people of our town. Um, but speaking to the point of having some planning and s perhaps some more accountability, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not talking about something terribly strict, but I'm pleased to hear that you're meeting with people from each of these organizations yearly. The list, I don't know how many new um, organizations are on there this year. The list it hasn't, changed. hasn't changed. It's the same number. No. No, this year has not changed. It's the same. It's the same. Okay. Um, is it appropriate to ask for an amendment that we include a planning committee or a review committee or something, or do you feel that you're able to handle some of the questions that have come up? Yeah, I think we're doing that now. Okay. We, um, we have them, we meet with them. We have the same question marks that everyone else does, you know, where, where's the money going? And that's why we reach out and make sure they still need the money, it's still being used for that service, and mm -hmm. as long as they are, we do it. So. Okay. I think it'd be a great idea if, if somebody in the community wanted to try to do that. Because one thing we do here, we ask them to be here. So if, if there's questions you have, like say for justice for dogs, if you have a question for them, we ask somebody from there to be here to answer your questions. So when you see that list, you have the right to vote it down, pull somebody out here, or increase it. The thing is, and you have the right to ask for the questions. If they're not here to answer them, you could vote it down if you wanted to, because we ask them to be here. Just remind that we'd have to actually move to uh, separate by a majority vote because this is, it is an entire article. It's an entire slate of expenditures. If you want to separate, we'd have to separate by a majority vote for a particular expenditure. Hi. I know this is my second time, so. So when I'm asking the question about some planning, and I, I'm not just talking about the accountability of how the money's being spent. I'm looking at also disparity between how much is given to different organizations. I know that that's what they've requested. I get all of that, but I still am happy to join Nina or anyone else to just look at those dynamics of, I could stand here right now, like I saw a few years ago um, for the Youth Rocks Community Center. Someone got up and said, I'd like to increase by 2,000, I think, dollars. And that passed when the organization themselves didn't ask for it. I'm sure if we said we want to add $5,000 to Capstone's, uh, you know, to giving, I'm sure that would be taken very, um, you know, with very would be taken very well and considered very well for them. So just the, the way that the process happens and how we can think as a town of what our priorities are, are I think the point. It's not just, I'm sure they're all spending the money in accountable ways and you're meeting with them, but it's more about who are we missing? What do we need to be focusing on? How can our town and our uh, community uh, you know, be thinking about all of our cons all of our community members and um, organizations within. So I don't know what the answer is, but I'm happy to uh, to meet with Nina and others to look at this and to bring some ideas to the select board or to just put a little more thought to it during, over the year if it's if there's, there's a possibility to do that formally or informally. Question is, shall Article 11 pass? Billy? So I'd like, I think this is what I have to do. I'd like to amend the article to include language that says every organization has to reapply and get the same and go to the town and get the signatures necessary in order to be part of the appropriations every five years. <clears throat> so uh, an amendment has been moved uh, to Article 11 which would require reapplication for funds every five years, if I understand the amendment correctly. Did I characterize that correctly, Billy? Yes. Hmm? By, by that, do you mean that they would have to get the, uh, 
signature. So currently, yeah, yeah. The, 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 yeah. So it, the uh, by application to the town, what's required now is that you need a certain number of signatures to actually um, get on the ballot. If I understand it correctly, is there? Is there a second to that? Yes. One of the one of the issues I have with this. You may speak to. Is that some of these organizations aren't the uh, people in charge aren't located in Morrisville, so asking them to come in to get a petition signed some may cause a hardship. So I just keep that in mind when you're thinking about this. Um, RCT is a good one. So it isn't a cut and dried black and white situation here. Yeah. Hi, Sarah Korkoulis from Morrisville, Vermont. I'm a board member of the Civic Center, so I can agree with you. Getting 200 signatures for that group is hard. It was, we tried to do it this year, and it wasn't easy. We couldn't do it. So to request that we do that every five years that's that's going to be a hardship for our board. So the motion currently pending is whether. <laughs> Amy. Thank you. I just feel like it's free money. It's free money. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is get signatures. It's free money. I'm not saying I don't want our town to donate to these wonderful causes. There just needs to be some accountability. Every year we have the same conversation. We didn't argue about a six million budget, but we're arguing over 110 one. Every year. Every year we ask, plead, can you please have the people show up to town meeting? They get invited, they don't come. Let's not give them money. Maybe they'll show up. I don't know, maybe I'll go to hell for saying that, but I feel like free money, I'd be there. Ed Wilson, Morrisville. I agree with some of the things that Amy says, especially the idea that we go over this every year. However, these organizations are being run by volunteers. Yep which already have a lot of problems just getting the help to do what they want to do. The names are in the book. If someone has an issue with these organizations, they can do it privately, they can contact the organization, and if they have concerns, they can come here. But these volunteers are busy, and if, if uh, unless you know of some reason why they shouldn't have it, or you have a bone to pick with them for some other reason, I, I think that we should trust them as we have in the other years. Thank you. Susan Sinnott, Lamoille Housing Partnership. I'm here. <laughs> what questions do you have? We provide safe, affordable housing in the Lamoille County and the Hardwick area. Yes, I'm shaking. <laughs> um, I'm not a person that likes to speak, but you're asking me to be here, I'm here. What questions do you have? Hello, Becky Ganya, Morrisville resident, and the executive director of the Clarina Howard Nichols Center. Um, I think my sentiment is the same. Um, I was not going to get up to speak because I don't think you all really want to initially hear 20 of us stand up to speak, but I think when there's an insinuation that we're not here, um, it's important to know that we are, so thank you. David Bickford, I take exception to the generalization that people aren't here representing their organizations. We are here, and we just chose not to come forward, all of us, and speak each and every time. But to say that we aren't here is a falsehood. Ed Lowenton, uh, Morrisville. Um, I'm of two minds of this, frankly. Um, my concerns on an ongoing basis are more with large uh, state agencies and 
uh, services, particularly in the field of mental health. I have discussions often with people involved in that about efficacy, how money is spent, the whole philosophy behind it. And, and um, the general consensus is um, uh, recipients of lo much larger amounts of state and federal money than we're talking about here uh, continue to get away with failing to validate what they're doing. Uh, they, uh, the statistics are in terms of clients served and uh, never is the question answered, well, what good did you do for them? So in answer, in asking that every one of these uh, um, small organizations go through the same thing might seem a little petty and kind of nitpicking for the small amounts of money relatively that the town is being asked uh, to help them with. On the other hand, uh, some kind of every two years, every five years, whatever the town wants to do, a process of revalidating their support base within the town. You're asking for town funds. Uh, do you have a constituency here? I think almost all of them continually demonstrate that they do, but asking the question in every so many years to re-demonstrate that is not such a terrible idea. And so whether it has to be 200, is there some guideline of how many names you have to get based on the available population who might be interested? Maybe it would be less than 200. I don't know, but asking uh, one, what did you do with the money? How effective is it? What benefits do we still have over the last, have we retained over the last, uh, asking some basic business-like questions. Um, again, it's a relatively small amount of money compared to the rest of the town budget, but it's not an unreasonable question. So the question might be modified to answer some of the objections of the people that don't want to have to go through it, but on the other hand, it's not an unreasonable question. Who is your constituency within the town, and how have you used the money on, an, on a basis of eff efficacy, cost efficiency? Hi, Stephanie Beatty, Lamoille County Mental Health, and I'm also a Morrisville resident. So I'm here as well. I work with the youngest population of children for Lamoille Valley, zero to six year olds. So if you have any child in childcare in Lamoille Valley, you have probably met me or seen me. <laughs> um, and I just wanted you to know that if you do have questions, um, I'm here as well. Thank you. Charity Tatro, and I'm a Morseville resident, and I'm hearing a lot of the discussion on this, and I've heard over the years that this does bring up a lot of discussion. And so looking at the numbers, it is a curious thing, the different things that are getting money allocated. And I'm, I'm curious to hear how much of what they use in their annual budgets is coming from this, and if they actually have to represent that being associated with some of these organizations. I know their value. I understand their need in the community. I think it looks like a fair amount is going to our youth services, which is definitely necessary. But I'm wondering about the balance and how much we're raising outside of taxes to support those groups. Um, I'm active in the Lamoille Area Cancer Network, and I know that that group in particular works very hard to raise money to support those families. They're not on this list, so I'm just curious what these organizations are doing to, to raise money for their businesses outside of asking it from tax dollars. Mm -hmm. And if there is any oversight in the percentages of what they're getting. Is that something that's coming up when they come to see you? Now, they, when they come to see us, they're explaining their program. They're, they're explaining the value of their program to us through the services they provide and for their, uh, the Morristown residents, and, and frankly, outside of Morristown residents, uh, that they serve. I think some of the, uh, 
I would just like to point out that the dollar values on this appropriation do not reflect the value of those programs. Mm -hmm. When I see $900 for Capstone Community Action versus, and I'm just grabbing off the appropriation list, but you know, 12,000, 15,000, 10,000 for others, mm -hmm. every one of us, depending on where we are in our lives, would value those organizations yeah. differently mm -hmm. because of our input or interaction with them. So don't, don't get caught up too much in the dollar amount that they've requested. Those organizations have requested those dollar amounts because it fits within their budget guidelines. Every one of these organizations is very conscious that they are spending taxpayer dollars. And they are very careful with them because they have to stretch them just like we have to stretch your dollars as well. The reason we don't have a, uh, a board where Allison spoke to some sort of a group together to go over these and review them is because it is subjective for us to group them into youth services or transportation and then only a lot percentages here and there, it would be completely subjective for me to do that because I don't know what all these organizations do. And that is in fact why they're incorporated in one article separate for this discussion to happen. I don't mind that it happens every year, frankly, because it is important. That's how we get educated and that's how we find out what's going on with those programs. I am pleased to see so many people here representing these organizations that are asking for our tax dollars. Um, I would not want to personally sit on a board that had to make a decision over who gets how much. I like leaving it to these organizations for their request, then they come to us and explain what they do. That allows each of us to decide the relevance of the program. Um, one of the questions I've always had is, if we are the sole provider of funding for one of these organizations, are they servicing just Morristown residents? Mm -hmm. And it's impossible to close your doors for those in need because you live in Hyde Park. Mm -hmm. But if we're only getting taxpayer dollars from Morristown and we're supporting other communities, that's one of those questions that I've always struggled with. Mm -hmm. But the amendment today is about. Yeah. I was going to remind. Restate that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for bringing that. Uh, the current amendment is: shall we, uh, shall uh, the article be amended to require organizations to reapply for funds every five years? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And the, just as a reminder, the application process, as I understand it, requires 200 signatures. Five five percent of the grant of the yeah. Which is approximately. I just wanted to say I'm here presenting also Lamoille Le County Habitat for Humanity. Our one thousand dollars is going to try to build a house for at least a hundred and fifty thousand. We have to raise every single penny of that money to put a family that's already been selected into the home on Maple Street. Uh, we do apply for some grants but the $1,000 is a drop in the bucket for what we need to uh, provide that home that the family then is required to pay us back. It's not a gift. It's a hand up, not a handout. Kate Greenman from Morristown. I'm not clear what the amendment changes. I don't know what the current process is. So my understanding is that you, uh, request an appropriation from the town, and you do that by getting 5% of the voter checklist. 5% uh, of the voters in town actually request that the appropriation request be put on the town meeting ballot. And then once you have actually made that request, it comes up on an annual basis. For him, some historical knowledge, we're going to. So the amendment would require that process to be undertaken every five years. Mary Ann's going to speak to the process. Mary Ann Wilson, Morristown. Um, the process, I think, is really important to note. 
as difficult as it is for some people to find 200 signatures, that's the democratic process that we use. So that's how all these people got on this list. They went out, they got a minimum of 200 signatures, then that, um, that ask for appropriation goes on the ballot and you all get to vote it. And somewhere along the line, and it was a long time ago, if you didn't request a different amount, you stayed on. So if somebody like, where was the uh, capstone, if, if they've been happy with $900 for 10 years, then they're happy with it. If they want $9,000, they go out, they get those 200 signatures on a petition, and it comes back, and it doesn't go on this list, it comes to you as a separate article. So you vote each one separately until such time as they don't change their ask, and it goes on this. So I have always felt that there doesn't need to be a time limit. So the current question is, shall Article 11 be amended to require organizations to reapply for funds every five years? Are you ready for that question? If so, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. nay. The nays appear to have it. The nays do have it. And you have declined to amend Article 11 as proposed. <laughs> Now the question is, shall Article 11 be adopted? And Article 11 reads, will the town vote to appropriate the sum of 113,969,000 for the following purposes? I'm gonna read all of them just so that you have them in mind. $2,900 for Central Vermont Adult Basic Education, $900 for Capstone Community Action, $2,500 for Central Vermont Council on Aging, 1,750 for Clarina Howard Nichols Center, 15,000 for Everyone Equals Morristown Community Center, $5,763 for Green Mountain Transit, $1,000 for Justice for Dogs, $2,500 Lamoille County Civic Association, $5,000 Lamoille County Food Share, 1,000 Lamoille County Habitat for Humanity, 3,900 Lamoille County Mental Health Committee or Health Community Connections, 12,000 Lamoille County Youth Center, Youth Rocks. 4,000 Lamoille Day Services, 4,000 Lamoille Economic Development Council, 3,000 Lamoille Family Center, $15,681 Lamoille Home Health and Hospice, 1,000 Lamoille Housing Partnership, 1,500 for Lamoille Restorative Center, $3,375 to Lamoille County Special Investigation Unit, $10,000 Meals on Wheels of Lamoille County, 1,000 Northern North Country Animal League, 5,200 for Rural Community Transportation, $1,000 for Retired Senior Volunteer Program, $10,000 for River Arts. Are you ready to vote on that article? If so, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I suppose nay. Nay. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and you adopted Article 11. Uh, this concludes the warned municipal articles. Is there any other business that may legally come before the 2020 annual town meeting in connection with foregoing municipal articles? Julia. Julia Campania, Morristown, Vermont. I wasn't sure if Leah Hollenberger was going to speak, but uh, Johnson, uh, Johnson State College is now Northern Vermont University, Johnson. And the alumni, which I'm a member of the Alumni Council, have been asked to um, locally speak or reach out to communities as they're able. Um, Leah and her team have put together an economic impact statement that is here today over on the side table. If anybody's interested, take a look at it. If you're a local business, take a look at it. The university as an economic engine um, to our area of the state is impressive. And if you, I would just encourage everybody to take a look at this piece of work. It's important. It may not be readily apparent to everybody um, the economic role, social role, cultural role that the college plays in our backyard. Um, so we're inviting you to, to look at that with us. Thank you.
Ed Wilson, Morrisville. Uh, I just want to uh, make the first point that after my passionate question to Dave Iacoboni regarding abortion, he made it a point to stop by the table and tell me that I'm still on his Christmas list. <laughs> we, can, we can disagree without being disagreeable. But the reason I came up here is I think we, we should start thinking more about uh, this paving. We live on a dirt road that will soon be a mud road, and the residents will contribute to the base of this road with car parts, which are given involuntarily. <laughs> the town highway department will be out there every night trying to repair it so it's passable, and, and they really do a good job. But by the next day, if it warms up, it's still in, impassable. The, we choose to live on the dirt road, but in 2020, I don't think that we should have to um, live at a place where we can't get emergency services. The fire trucks could not get to our home or many of the homes on the Fraser Road, and neither could ambulances when this gets really deep. The road needs to be rebuilt, as do uh, a lot of others. I'm not making this plea just for uh, Fraser Road. But from what I heard with the cost of paving, I think we've got to start thinking about um, adding something, maybe a cent. Uh, I don't want, a, this is not a motion, it's not going to be one. But we should think about some way of adding to a capital fund for this paving because it sounds to me like we're really going to be in trouble. Thank you. Is there any other business to be conducted today? Amy Town, Morrisville. Sorry, I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but I love where we live. I love Morrisville. I love the school district. My kids have gone through the school district. I have more kids going through the school district. Oxbow is beautiful. I don't like reading negative stuff about Morrisville in the press. And there's been a lot of social media stuff in Burlington fake accounts, we had an incident here in Morrisville too. I don't know what the policy is about personnel, and I don't necessarily know if this is the proper place to talk about it, but I just feel like if you're in a position of authority, you have a responsibility to be responsible for your word and your integrity. And with that said, Speaking poorly about your employer or the town where you work reflects poorly on you, and it sends a bad message to the people who live in the town about you. I don't like reading about it in the news. I know it was a sensitive subject, and I appreciate the work that you guys did on it, and I hope it doesn't happen again. Is there any other business to be conducted? There being no further business to come before the annual meeting of the town of Morristown, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. To David, uh, second. <laughs> question is, shall uh, this meeting be adjourned? Are you ready for that question? If so, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Suppose nay. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and this meeting is adjourned.